So the inscribed angle in this figure that's there at the top of the page that I just gave out, the inscribed angle would be angle A, B, C. Go ahead, Shannon. Okay, angle A, B, C, there is the inscribed angle, and the intercepted arc is this arc right here. It's the minor arc, arc A, C. Okay, the inscribed angle is angle A, B, C. The inscribed arc is arc A, C. Uh, a big thing that we need to remember here is that an in or no is that an inscribed angle has its vertex on the circle. That vertex B is on the circle. <clears throat> if B were anywhere else, not on the perimeter of the circle, then that would not be an inscribed angle. Okay, if B were like right in here, okay, just kind of floating in the middle of the circle, that would not be an inscribed angle. If it were there at the center, like O is, that is a central angle. So just as a little reminder, angle AOC is a central angle. They both intercept the same arc. Okay. AOC is the central angle that intercepts arc AC. Angle ABC is the inscribed angle that intercepts angle or arc AC. And there is a relationship, just like there is with central angles. Central angles, remember the uh, measurement of the central angle is the same as the measurement of the arc. Okay, there is a relationship that exists with inscribed angles. Um, and I have a bunch of uh, diagrams there on your paper to help you discover what that relationship is. And so I'm going to give you a few seconds to look at all those, to talk with your group, and figure out what goes in the blank here in the inscribed angle theorem. Okay, after looking at each of those pictures, the first batch that I've got there, the inscribed angle is less than 180 degrees. In the middle batch, the uh, inscribed angle or the intercepted arc is 180 degrees. And then the last example there, <clears throat> it is greater than 180 degrees. But it doesn't matter what the angle measurement or the arc measurement is, every time the measure of the inscribed angle of a circle is half the measure of its intercepted arc. Okay, the inscribed angle is half the measure of the intercepted arc. So let's look at that uh, problem down there in the corner of the page. You've got a diagram. BD is a diameter of the circle. The center is O. A, B, C, and D are on the circle, and we've got a bunch of different numbered angles there that we need to try and find the measure of. So if you look at part A, part A says that the measure of angle arc AB is 100 degrees. So this arc right here on the outside is 100, and eight, uh, 100 degrees. How many of the numbered angles can we find the measure of? Well, uh, the easiest thing would be is if there were a central angle that corresponds to arc AB. There is not a central angle that corresponds to uh, arc AB. There is not an angle that goes through the center of the circle. There is an inscribed angle, however. Which angle is the inscribed angle? Can anybody tell me which number that is? Uh, yes, number four. There are actually two. Number four is one of them. Now, how do you tell that? Well, if you start at A and you follow the line um, from A to the other side of the circle to C and you do the same thing with B, that is one way you can determine that angle 4 is an inscribed angle. Okay, so it is 50. There's another one. Number 7. Okay, we can go from A along that line on the left and from B... To D, so that means angle 7 is an inscribed angle, which makes it 50 degrees as well. Now, there is still more than this that we can figure out. <coughs> Excuse me. And I know that because um, I can fill in another arc. 
there's another arc that we can fill in here. Um, since DB is the diameter, then that means arc DAB, that whole thing, that's half the circle. So that's 180 degrees. So if from A to B is 100 degrees, that means from B to A, there's 80 degrees. So let's look at the intercepted arcs for uh, arc, or excuse me, the inscribed angles for arc A and B. Well, if we follow segments going out of A and B to point B, we see that angle 2 is an inscribed angle, so angle 2 is 40 degrees. There's another segment coming out of A to a point on the other side of the circle from A to C and from B to C, so that means angle 5 is inscribed for that arc, so angle 5 is 40 degrees. Uh, let's see here. What else can we determine? That may be all we can do because we don't know. that uh, 1 and 8 together, okay, 1 and 8 together uh, form a 90 degree angle because uh, DB again is the diameter, so this entire side right here is 180. So its inscribed angle is 1 and 8 because together Let's look at part B. Part B says given the two measures, angle 1 is 55 degrees and measure 2, angle 2 is 50 degrees, find the measures of the four minor arcs A, B, C, D, and D, A. Okay, now this is taking the picture and kind of starting from scratch, really. Um, so I'm going to just copy of this so we can look at it fresh. Okay, so we're we're not going with any of the other other assumptions. We're ignoring part A. Now we're going with just uh, the measure of angle one is fifty five degrees. The measure of angle two is fifty degrees. So let's find the measure of these arcs. Okay, so fifty five degrees is the inscribed angle for arc BC. So that means arc BC is one hundred and ten degrees. Uh, angle 2 is the inscribed angle for AD, so that makes AD 100 degrees. Uh, 
right here. So if AB is 100 degrees, DB is the diameter, so that means AB is 80 degrees. Um, and vice versa, on the other side, the lower half, if BC is 110 degrees, then we're left with 70 degrees for BC. Okay, so it's kind of weird with just those two pieces of information, we are able to figure out all of that for that circle. Okay, 